Okay. The power of darkness and half, half, what does that say? Half is what? Half is a done deal. In the past, translated us into his kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Amen. I say amen. This is amazing. If we take a hold of this and believe this for what it says, and we can be translated right now, we can be like Enoch on this earth. Yeah, our bodies might be here, but we can be translated. Living people on this earth. Jesus, alive and well, and you and me, the hope of victory. Has, has Jesus ever lost, uh, lost a battle? Is it even possible that he could lose a battle? It was when he walked in the flesh so many years ago. But never. He's never done anything wrong. Nor could he. Or would he. Praise God. Let's continue down. The preeminence of Christ. In verse 15. Who is the image of of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Do you believe that? Do you live that? Whatever we give our time and affection to, that should be in the place of God is an idol. It's an idol, brothers and sisters. Is that simple? I, I, I don't know. It could be anything. I'm not here to condemn anybody. But, you know, even Facebook could be a God. When I say a God, I mean an idol. Because that's the way God looks at it. If something's in the place of where He belongs, it could be anything so stupid as Facebook. Right? So, if God is saying all these things, then how ought we to be? If, if we were just this much in love with Jesus as he is in love with us, wow. You know what I'm saying? Jesus said, I love you this much. I mean, and did what for you? For you, specifically for you. Specifically for me. Specifically for each and every one of us. How often... And how much time in a day do you spend considering that fact? How much do you allow that to really change your life? Maybe you're busy with Facebook and you never opened your Bible. I don't know. Maybe you're busy with other things. But God gives us these pictures like a marriage, right? Doesn't he? Like a father and a son or a daughter. He gives us these pictures to try to, to, to illustrate to us, to teach us things. What if, what if the man or the woman was always trying to get the affection of the other, but they were just, just too busy with everything else? Jesus' love for you and I is so hot, you can't even imagine love like this. And where are we? Where, what, are we what are we doing? We're just lollygagging around? Don't we want to hasten His coming? Don't you want to really know a love like that? Do you remember what it was like when God first touched your life? Do you realize it can be like that? Why does love wane over time. What happens? Lots of communication. 
Loss of communication? Let me finish here. For it is pleased that the Father, that he, in Him all the fullness dwell, that's 19. And having made peace through the blood of His cross by Him to reconcile, oh, praise God for that word, all things unto Himself, by Him I say, whether there be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath He reconciled. In the body of His flesh, through death, to, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in His sight. Can I get an amen? Amen. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature. Did you hear that? Which was preached to every creature. So this has already been done. Which is under heaven, wherefore, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. You remember the story of David and Saul? David, Saul was the great leader of the chosen people, right? And they're all on the bank with the Philistines over here, right? And there's a giant. You remember his name? Goliath. Goliath. And he's mocking the armies of the living God, right? And what is Saul doing? Standing in his tent, right? Scared to death. He's supposed to be the leader of this great people. God's army, right? Weren't they? They were God's army, weren't they? Yeah. Okay. So this little shepherd boy says, how dare that? Who do they, they will defy the armies of the living God? This little boy goes out there and takes him out. Does it even seem physically possible? Ah, he had faith. Look, God in anything is a majority. I don't care how small you think you are. God has already won this battle. When are we going to realize that it's over? It's finished. All of God's other creation already understands this. It's just us here. Just us. We, haven't, we, we still have this sympathy for the devil in our hearts that needs to be excommunicated. Amen. This flesh of ray needs to hang on the cross every single day before my feet hit the floor. Listen, if we go to bed with Jesus, we wake up with Jesus. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. We need to trust God's promises, and, and David trusted God's promises. What did that do to Saul after that whole situation? Oh, he thought it was wonderful, Saul did, right? But then, ooh, now he was to kill David. You ever think about why he wanted to kill David? Ooh. He should have done what David did, shouldn't he? David trusted God's promises. Let's turn our Bibles real quick to Matthew 25. I'm going to wrap this thing up quickly. Matthew 25. You there? 25 and 30. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into utter darkness. Outer darkness. Therefore shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Who is this unprofitable servant? Could it be this flesh of my own that would love to cover myself with fig leaves? Hmm? 
God wants to give us the covering. The covering of life that he gave to Adam and Eve. But he's not going to cover that over sin. How do we keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus? There's only one way, brothers and sisters. Belief. Faith. How did Jesus do it? The same way. This ain't rocket science. We try to make it difficult. We have to put all these things. We think, oh, well, the blocks all have to sit this way. Why don't we just let God be God and us be the liar and admit who we are and what we are and leave this place today on fire for Jesus Christ. No more of this lukewarmness. I mean, you heard God say that he doesn't have any respect to it. He would rather you be cold than lukewarm. My last verse, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I know you guys are hungry. We're going to have a great meal today.
I'm not even going to, I'm going to let you guys go home and study that verse yourself. Pick it apart. Understand it. You know what the problem is with us? If we don't dig into these words and what they mean. Like when I talked about earlier about the word disobedient, 545 and 544, it's very important that we understand what these words mean because they make the Bible come alive. I'm telling you, people don't really study their Bibles, not even pastors and preachers. Don't take my word for anything. Don't take anybody's word for it. Get into the Bible yourself and dig into it. Find out what these words mean. Is it present tense? Is it past tense? Look at these qualifiers and say, why? Why did they choose that word? What does it mean? That's how you really become good Bible scholars. And you can know your map because your map will lead you to the destination, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn will be 289.
I want to be connected to the vine. I want Jesus' sap to run through me so that he can hang some fruit. And we can finish this work. Don't you want to go home? Brothers and sisters, I, I don't want to be the church of, yeah, I want Jesus to come, but not today. You know? Isn't that the way most people are? Let's get rid of that. I know we all have loved ones that, that, that aren't walking in the way. But we need to pray like we've never prayed before. God has answered every prayer in my life that I just would not refuse to Him not to answer that prayer, that I would not let up until He answered. And He's answered every single one of those prayers. I know He's answered all my prayers, but the ones in some way or fashion, but the ones that I really had to have, He gives you. Trust me. He will. Don't let up, brothers and sisters. Let's get this thing straight and go home. Let's be in a spirit of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you love us in ways we can't even begin to comprehend. We thank you that you haven't given us Jesus for a moment, but you have caused Him to walk the road that you have given us the way out. Father, we are Barabbas. We are the one that's been set free. Our Lord and Savior, the Commander-in-Chief of all the hosts of, of worlds that we can't even comprehend has given His life a ransom for me and for you. Father, I just want to thank you for this love that you've bestowed upon us. And I ask you that today as we leave this place, we will never be the same. Let the jump lay down here on this, on this altar. Jesus paid all of our sin debt. He owns it. We shouldn't hold on to it any longer. Let us, Father, give all of our sin so that he can give us this glorious righteousness that you long 